plug this thing in. Hey! I hate the time change. Anyway, so last night I went to grease the Kubota here and this pin pushed out when I started greasing it. The grease lurks here in the middle, just started pushing this pin out. It's broken right on that grease ring. I'm not going to show that today because I'm just going to replace that with some 4140. All I got to do is put a hole in it because inside here it's just a bolt that holds it in. So I was not using this tractor last night to feed cows. I was using this tractor and this happened. Yeah, I think this is supposed to be connected in here. <sighs> At least we're getting some rain today. Had snow a couple days ago. The rain and the snow will be great for all the fires we've had lately. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to repair this because I've got to replace this loop. And I also this is one inch shaft. I cannot believe they went down to one inch shaft on this because the cylinder up here is inch and a quarter shaft. So why would you go from inch and a quarter up here down to one inch on your bucket? So I'm gonna go up to inch and a quarter, which means that I'm gonna have to bore out these guys. I had to looking at this, and that metal is so stretched out, and it's cracked all the way around here. I am just going to cut it out. Just cleaning this all up with the grinder, getting rid of all that scale. And I ran up here, and I want you to look at the sparks. Yeah, there's definitely some carbon to this steel. We must be getting close to Equinox because that sun is just beaming in that east window. Well, time has gotten away from me. It is now Thursday, and I haven't gotten anything done on this project in the last couple days. Uh, it has been butt cold out here on the plains, down in the teens. Spring is going to try to be here again today. It's supposed to be 80 today, and that is way too hot. I'm going to melt. I probably won't put any of this in the video because nobody cares about temperatures, so let's get at it. And after a whole lot more careful measuring, I finally came up with a point that I decided was right. And that's really nice. So now I'm gonna go up to inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bushing that fits on here, that makes that thicker, that's inch and a quarter diameter too. step is I need to bore out that side 
and get that up to inch and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and spot weld in this plate where I want it. That'll kind of help ensure that my boring bar is somewhat in line. I didn't think I was going to be using these lineup cones, but they actually do fit inside an inch and a quarter hole. I need to make myself a smaller boring bar for this too because I work a lot with inch and inch and a quarter pins. Seems like most agriculture equipment is either inch or inch and a quarter. So having a one inch boring bar doesn't work out too well. So I guess I need to make myself a oh, seven eighths one and see how that works. Yeah. When you're spot welding this stuff on, you don't need very long welds at all. Just like quarter inch, maybe you can go clear up to like half inch if you want. And that is it. It takes almost nothing to hold this stuff in place. Also, sometimes once you get stuff welded together, your bar doesn't slide anymore. And since these are self-aligning bearings, sometimes just kind of tap them, make them vibrate. There we go. I had to find the right spot. Now it slides. Right there, I'll go with that. Okay, plug this thing in. Hey, there we go. I gotta find something to hold that drill. That stuff's hard. That bit is not liking that. going. That's good steel in this mount here, that's for sure. Uh, but I am to the point where I am in deeper than my bit, and that's a 3 8 bit in there, so I'm probably like a half inch in. So I'm to the point where I can cut off that bushing. Now it's time to drill the cross hole in the bushing or block, whatever you want to call it. And when I'm done drilling that, something I really like doing is taking a transfer punch of the size that I drilled the hole through, uh, you know, matches the drill bit size, stick it in there, and I can double check myself real easy this way. But we're somewhere around 444 and a half. So four, 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 five. I mean, I said that right. So almost 445 thousandths, right? Put on the accuracy here. And on this side, if I can get in there, look at that, 445 and a half. I'm so happy with that. So that thing is, I'm going to call that dead on center.
Okay, now I gotta drill a hole in that stuff. I think is what I'm gonna do is just take the grinder and grind me a flat spot to get down through that hard layer and grind a flat spot on the other side to get down through that hard layer. And I should be able to punch a hole in it without annealing, I hope. That's taking a lot of pressure though. It's picking up a piece. Looks like the piece is kicking up like this on me. It is, isn't it? I think I'm back on center. I don't know. I fear I'm off a little. I hope. Ah, oh, yeah, look at that. And I was just thinking another good way to have done this is to drill everything out to one inch or slightly over, just barely over, put it all together, weld it all solid, and then take the line boring rig and bore it all out to inch and a quarter. That would have been a good way too. Eh, just food for thought. Always more than one way to do something. showing 1.248 should have been there so I got a little tool pressure apparently and yep the rod does not fit so oh that end almost starts oops there's a little bit of a ring out there but I need at least ten thousandths over so Give me uh, five thousandths on the dial and try it all again, I guess. We are at uh, 265-266. That's about fifteen thousandths over. Does it fit? Whoa, oh, hello. I guess it fits. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out how to get this in line. Stuck a one inch shaft on here, you know, back in here and just tried to align it. But there's too much slop. I don't feel comfortable with any of that. And then I remembered that over on my press, I have this little one inch to inch and a quarter adapter that I use a lot over there. So one inch fits in there, inch and a quarter fits in there. A little bit of play just because we got slop in the machine, but I think that'll work great. And I think I'm just going to trace around it best I can with the scribe. And do I have a mark? Yep, I have a mark. So I think I'm going to take the plasma cutter to it now. I'm wearing my coat, not my flame resistant stuff. Dang it. Gotta change that. Well, that fits in there quite nice. Got a pretty good chamfer, I think. 
on all them sides. So I think that'll work just fine. And now I'm going to put a grease zerk in it. Go grab the grease gun and tighten up that bolt, and we'll go try this thing out. I'm also going to fix this tooth today while I'm at it. So if you want to see that video, then click on the card up there 